Forget everything you've ever heard about endless summaries, mindless memorization, and sleepless nights with books spread across the table while your mind drifts elsewhere. There's a different way to study, a smarter way, a bolder way, and a far more powerful way. And here's the secret. Don't assume you're just like everyone else or that you should study the way everyone else does. Every human being is unique. Every student should transform their learning into something simple and even fun. Understand this. If you apply the five secrets I'm about to share with you today, you won't just learn faster, you'll understand more deeply, becoming someone capable of mastering any subject and teaching it like a true master. Let's begin. Imagine you're facing a complicated subject, one that feels like an impossible wall to climb. Most people at that moment either give up or settle for memorizing loose words, soulless formulas, lifeless concepts. But here lies the first secret that separates the genius from the average student. Simplify. Simplifying doesn't mean making something shallow. It doesn't mean stripping away depth. It means taking something complex and breaking it down into pieces so clear, so obvious, that even a seven-year-old could understand it. Allow me to show you an example. Let's take a subject that scares many people, quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics describes the possible states of microscopic systems using wave functions governed by Schrodinger's equation, which evolves deterministically until a measurement occurs, at which point it collapses probabilistically into one of the observable's eigenvalues. Phew, tough, right? Now, listen to the simplified version, Feynman style. Imagine that the world of very small things, like electrons and photons, works like a die you toss into the air. While the die is spinning, it could land on any number. In fact, it's as if it's on all numbers at the same time. Only when it hits the table, the measurement, does it reveal a specific number. Quantum mechanics is the math that helps us predict the chances of each number appearing. It doesn't tell us which one will come up, but it tells us the probability of each outcome. See the difference? <laughs> In the first explanation, you memorize fancy words and understand nothing. In the second, you visualize it. An electron is like a die spinning in the air. That creates a mental image, simple, clear, that even a child could imagine. That is the power of simplification. Taking the incomprehensible and turning it into something so concrete it becomes unforgettable. But here's the catch. You can't simplify a complex subject unless you at least understand a piece of it. So here's a powerful practical guide. Turn concepts into images and stories. The human brain wasn't designed to memorize formulas. It was designed to imagine. Every time you encounter something complex, ask yourself, if this were a picture, what would it look like? Or, if this were a story, how would I tell it? For example, Electricity isn't a flow of electrons in a conductor. It's water flowing through invisible pipes, where water pressure is voltage and the flow of water is current. This metaphor sticks instantly. Now try this. Explain it to a seven-year-old, real or imagined. Take a notebook and write down the concept you just studied. Then imagine you're explaining it to a child. When you attempt to simplify it, you'll notice the spots where you get stuck. Those sticking points are the gaps in your understanding. That's exactly where you need to go back and review. The golden rule is this. If you can't explain it simply, you don't really understand it yet. Use concrete analogies. The mind loves comparisons. Fractions? <laughs> Imagine slicing a pizza into pieces. Derivatives? Imagine measuring the speed of a car right now, not the average speed of the whole trip. Probability? Imagine rolling dice or flipping coins. The more concrete the analogy, the faster your brain builds connections. Break what you're learning into micro blocks. Don't try to swallow the entire subject at once. Split it into 10 to 15 minute chunks. In each block, follow three steps. Read or watch the explanation. Close the material and try to explain it in your own words. Write down the parts you forgot. This prevents you from just glancing over the content without truly absorbing it. Use mind maps or simple doodles. It's not about making art. It's about visualizing connections. 
Draw arrows, circles, comparisons. Often a quick sketch is worth more than an entire page of notes. Simplify by shifting levels. Ask yourself, how would I explain this to a child? How would I explain this to a friend? How would I explain this to an expert? This exercise of switching levels forces you to reorganize knowledge, and that is what solidifies learning. To truly learn in a simplified way, you must turn abstract ideas into images, stories, and analogies. Test your clarity by teaching a seven-year-old. Break learning into small blocks, and always review the points where you stumble. When you master the art of simplification, something extraordinary happens. The weight lifts from your shoulders. Studying stops being a tiring obligation and becomes a game of clarity. Each concept that once looked like a mountain turns into a staircase with clear steps you can climb one by one. And here is the real power. Simplification is not just a study technique. It's a lifelong weapon. Those who can explain simply are listened to. Those who can translate the complicated into clarity are respected. And those who master this art can learn anything because they no longer fear difficulty. They know that everything, absolutely everything, can be broken down into smaller, understandable, manageable parts. To simplify is to have power. And when you master this ability, no one will be able to hold you back. Because the world doesn't belong to those who complicate. The world belongs to those who can simplify. Now, pay close attention, because this is the second secret, and perhaps the most powerful of all. You can spend hours studying. You can underline entire pages. You can memorize endless lists. But none of that compares to the impact of one simple act. Teaching. Yes, teaching in order to learn more. True knowledge only appears when you're able to explain what you've learned to someone else. That's the moment the mask falls off. Because while you're just reading or repeating things silently in your head, your mind hides the gaps. But when you need to put it into simple words so another person can understand, the holes appear. It's like turning on the light in a dark room. Suddenly you see every corner where clarity is still missing. Imagine this. You've just studied a difficult math chapter or a complex philosophy concept, and then someone asks you, so, what did you get from it? If you freeze, if you stammer, if you start rambling, there's your proof. You haven't really understood it yet. Now comes the moment of truth. Because it doesn't matter if you simplify. It doesn't matter if you teach. It doesn't matter if you study hard for one single day, if tomorrow you just abandon it all. Richard Feynman's fourth secret isn't written in his physics books, but in his life itself. Discipline. Everyone promises they'll change. But what separates those who win from those who quit is the ability to transform effort into routine, intensity into consistency, and desire into habit. Discipline isn't about brute force. It isn't about living like a robot. It's about creating smart systems that make study inevitable. Build your own rituals, write down your plans, organize your hours. Understand that the human mind gets lost easily, so create environments and practices that pull you back into focus. Discipline is not studying when you feel like it. Anyone can do that. Discipline is studying when you don't feel like it, but doing it anyway. It's the silent, almost invisible decision that builds giants over the years. Imagine this. You decide that every single day, Without fail, you will study for 20 minutes. No matter where you are, no matter how you feel, no matter the chaos around you, just 20 minutes. It sounds small, but that small becomes a chain. In a week, that's already more than two hours. In a month, more than eight. In a year, more than 100 hours. And it all started with 20 minutes. Discipline turns the extraordinary into the inevitable. While others wait for motivation, you act. While others swing between enthusiasm and laziness, you move forward one step at a time. That's how you build something indestructible. Now we've reached the fifth and final secret, and perhaps the most surprising of all, learning with joy. It sounds contradictory, doesn't it? How can something so serious be fun? But this is exactly where the difference lies. Curiosity is the engine of intelligence. And when you bring joy into learning, 
the mind opens in a way no cold technique ever could. Imagine this. You take a difficult concept, and instead of treating it like torture, you turn it into a game. Geniuses do this all the time. They turn physics into funny experiments, into doodles, into analogies that seem like jokes. They laugh, they draw, they play around, and in the middle of all that, they learn. Studying with joy doesn't mean being superficial. It means studying in a way the brain loves. When you play with a subject, you create emotional memories. You link knowledge to joy instead of to pressure. And everything tied to joy is remembered far more easily. Want an example? To understand fractions, use pizza or chocolate. To explore chemistry, play around in the kitchen. To master a language, turn it into songs, jokes, or role-playing. When the body and emotions join the game, learning sticks like a tattoo in your mind. That's what turns study into passion. That's what turns repetition into discovery. And remember this, fun is not a waste of time. It's a multiplier of time. What you learn with joy, you never forget. What you learn by force slips away like sand through your fingers. So guard this secret like gold. If you're not having fun, you're not learning like a genius. <laughs> Laugh. Play, question, invent games. Studying with seriousness is easy. The real challenge is studying with joy. Whew. And once you achieve that, there are no limits to how far you can go. Because in the end, the genius is not the one who suffers through learning. The genius is the one who finds pleasure in discovery. And if these ideas have awakened something inside you, I want you to do one thing right now. Leave a comment below and tell me which of Feynman's five secrets you will apply first in your studies. Hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel because here you'll find far more than common study tips. You'll discover how to learn in a way that's intelligent, bold and transformative, exactly like a genius would. Turn on the notification bell because the next videos will bring you new techniques, new provocations, and new ways to expand your mind. This is your moment to change the way you learn. The decision is yours.